Podcasts are hot right now. How do I know? Well, you're listening to one right now, aren't you? But you might be wondering, how on earth do I get my voice out there and start my own podcast? It all seems so intimidating. Between hosting and platforms and monetization, it can get real complicated real quick. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We started this podcast over two years ago, not knowing clue one on how to do it. So how do we do it? We did it with Anchor. Anchor is the free podcast app with creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on all the platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And everybody likes money, right? Well, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So go right now, download the free Anchor app, or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your hosts, Bart Moraz and John Suter. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. It's E-Commerce Minute, episode 625. In today's episode, Kite delivers rental cars to your door. In episode 615, Lyft launches rental car service, we told you about ride-sharing company Lyft launching a rental car service and we predicted that other ride-sharing services would soon follow suit. While Uber hasn't yet waded the rental waters, there's an entirely new company on the rise that's shaking up the way we rent cars. Kite wants to bring rental cars to its users. That means no parking lots with special access instructions, lines at rental car agencies, or even reserved spots on the street. A contract worker, which Kite calls a surfer, drops the car off at your location, and then it's up to them to get home or wherever they're off to next. They can take the bus, walk, or pack a scooter in the trunk and ride away, but in any case, the company doesn't provide a means for them to get back to where they need to be. The idea is to deliver unused cars sitting in the parking lots of established rental agencies, which it wouldn't specify which ones exactly, to compete against services like Getaround and Turo, which let strangers rent their cars to other strangers. Unlike enterprise and car sharing apps, Lyft gives you a ride credit to and from the rental spot. It's kind of the opposite of Kite's straight-to-your-door service. Like rental agencies, you don't know exactly what you'll be getting with Kite. You choose between a sedan or SUV with higher daily rates for a larger car. But this isn't geared for people who are adamant about renting a Mazda CX-5 in red. Instead, this is for those who just need a spacious five-seater to get around on a weekend trip. When you're done using your rental car, a driver will pick up the car from a location of your choice. Kite's founders didn't map out a precise pay or tip structure for their surfers, but said that car rentals are big ticket delivery items, which means that people on average tip more. Still, it's not clear how much of the $19 delivery fee surfers keep. Kite is still in beta for iOS and is only available in the San Francisco city limits, but says that it has plans to expand. Uh, hmm. Okay, this is interesting. I like I, I like this concept. Um, those poor surfers that have to find their way back. <laughs> that's, that's, that's well, they can just surf down the. True. Know, yeah, surfing. so you can tell that whoever designed the service designed it to be in like San Francisco, a really tight city like that, where you can, you know, if you don't have a car, you can get around by other means fairly easily. Yeah. I don't know how this would work in Philly. I mean, unless you had it zoned by you know certain geographic neighborhoods or things so this i don't think this is going to work everywhere i'm also Uh, like imagining like lax like calling a kite to lax and like the person is just stranded at lax kind of well they do they do have rental car services i know i've done this before where you drive to the off-site parking the dude actually gets in drives you to the Mm -hmm. airport and drops you off and takes your car back that's all the car does that yeah right so silver car before Right. But what about this like car rental? So, uh, you know, I'm in this, this far flung neighborhood. Uh, the surfer comes, drops off my Honda Civic, and then it's he's SOL. He's got to find his own way home. Whoa, dude. Can we do me a ride? Dude, like, how much Whoa. do surfers Like, we don't know how much the surfers get paid. Like, <laughs> it might not be worth their while, man. It's like if Kite's going to call them surfers, they should at least like give them surfboards to slither home <laughs> on. <laughs> But no, I, I, I get it. I, yeah, I think it is going to be a cool thing for areas that can like keep up with it and like make sure the surfers are okay. Yeah. But, where is the, where is this based out of right now? Like I think just San Francisco. Uh, of course. <laughs> of course yeah. it's in San Francisco. Yeah. 
You read yeah, it. Uh, interesting. I I don't know. I I don't know how it would uh, become nationwide, given that the, the whole business model depends on these poor drivers, yeah. uh, these poor delivery drivers finding their way back. Because like, <laughs> and, I, and I know like enterprise does that, but don't they send like another car behind that come? Pick the they'll dude? pick you up. They'll pick you up, right? Oh, yeah. they'll pick you up, but yeah, they, they won't they, drop you off. Oh, okay. I mean, they'll drop you off afterwards, but they don't drop the car off. They don't, yeah. don't pick right. you up. They don't do drop the car. The car. They pick yeah. you up to get your car. Correct. Like, the thing is, like, if these it. surfers are making that bank in tips, like, okay, you're gonna go somewhere and then have to Uber home for twenty five. All right, buddy. Dollars. That's so, the that's Uber yeah, back. That's my point. <laughs> like, let's use let's use Philadelphia as, as, an, as an example. Um, Philadelphia is an example. If I rent a kite car and this guy has to drive from wherever the rental lot is in Philadelphia. Most of the rental lots are down by the airport, but there are some scattered about here and there. He's got to make his own way back. And from where I live, that's like either taking a bus or calling an Uber and he's yeah. going to spend all his tip money getting home, man. Yeah. it. There's no profit. I, I don't see a profit. Well, there's profit for the, for, for the kite, but not for the driver. Yeah. Depending on how much they're even like base salary. You know what I mean? All right, so there was somebody from Mashable that tried the service, Sasha Likach. Uh, she says she downloaded the app for a one-month trial. Using the app, she showed a, a surfer arrive with a Hyundai Elantra, even though that's what she didn't want. Surfers can tell users when they're nearby. $34 a day for up to 24 hours. That's about average, plus $8 for insurance. Uh, so you have to pay for the delivery. I think – Oh, this is expensive. It's expensive. So what with the delivery becomes so here's the, so that's the spiff there. So it's you rent an average car for an average price, but if you want to deliver it to your house, it's an extra twenty bucks. Great. I think we're still talking about how these surfers make money on this. <laughs> pray um, for the surfers. Yeah, Justice pray for the for surfers. Them. Okay. I mean, I think this could work for uh, definitely for the consumer who doesn't give a crap and says, "I just need the car, bring it to my house." No. Chop chop, uh, you know. Uh, but otherwise, well, according according to the site, they they uh, they use a kite to drop them off. They use a kite to drop them off. Yeah. So if they use a kite or a drone to bring these poor drivers back and forth, I think it would make a lot more sense. I guess we could chalk this up as like a not like a luxury, but like a luxury, like getting a car delivered right to your door. You know? It definitely is because yeah. the, the pricing isn't competitive otherwise. Yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. So, but the funny thing is, they're not selling lugs. They're not renting you a luxury car either. So I think that's, that's going to be their deal. challenge. They're not. It's not. They're not bringing you know an Audi to your door. They're bringing a Hyundai Elantra, and then you're paying an extra twenty dollars to get a Hyundai Elantra. Right. Which we, and, like, with silver car, you get a better car. You know. Right, and it's thirty four dollars a day, which is about average. Yeah. Um, you're not, unless you're in a resort resort area, um, and then your insurance obviously can't do anything about that. But extra twenty bucks, so you're talking sixty six bucks a day to rent. Well, sixty six dollars for the initial, and then I guess it's whatever following days minus the delivery charge. But still, not cheap. Not cheap. Yeah, that's that's a lot of monies. A lot of monies. So it's a convenience play, and again, these poor surfers. <laughs> All right, Brittany, why don't we close up with a little stat time? So car rental and carpooling significantly help in reducing the number of cars on the road. Which side note is an issue that we talk about a lot on this podcast lately. In 2014, the average global car rental rate increased by 2.2%, and in 2018, the global car rental rates are forecasted to increase by 0.6% in comparison to the previous year. Boo. Boo. <laughs> um, in 2016, the global car rental market was estimated at approximately $58.26 billion, with a B, U.S. dollars, and is expected to grow at a CAGR of around 13.55% between 2017 and 2022. And by 2022, the market is expected to reach approximately 124.56 billion with a B US dollars. That's a lot of billions of dollars. The co-founders of Kite, Weidenman and Volk, said almost 90% of users request, request the cars a day in advance, with most getting a car on Saturday morning and returning it Sunday night. A classic weekend getaway. So maybe that's just who they're targeting. Maybe we're we're reading this wrong. Maybe it's just like the you know those crazy kids that live in you know in in a urban area that don't have a car. And we've said this before. The problems with some of the services, you don't want to be Ubering around to do your errands, and you don't want to Uber to you don't want to 
Uber down to the resort and you know, it's like you want to have you want to have a little bit more control and maybe that's who they're targeting here because it, they don't really seem to concentrate too much on multi-day rentals so maybe it is just uh you know maybe that's who they're targeting maybe we read this completely. which i get it yeah no i get it i get it i totally get it we were saying that about the lift rentals it's like they the, the people who want to do that they don't have cars, but they want to have that control of a car, and they want to run around on a Saturday and have their fun without, okay, call another car. <laughs> it probably winds up being cheaper anyway. So Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's learn. All right. Good luck to Kite. Good luck to their surfers. That's your e-commerce minute for today. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe, or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e-commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e-commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy. <laughs> <laughs>